Okay, let's take a look at number one from the practice exam. All right, so let's just read the question. It says, consider this function. And part A says, find an x value at which f of x is discontinuous. Okay. Um, so here's the function. Uh, whenever you see the absolute value signs, it's kind of, it means that the function is really defined by cases. It's just that um, <clears throat> it's in kind of a sneaky way. So what are the, the absolute value signs? So those in themselves, right, are kind of sneaky. So the absolute value of x is just x if x is greater than or equal to zero. But it's negative x if x is negative. Well, that sounds kind of backwards, but if you try it once or twice, you'll see it makes sense. So what is What's the absolute value of negative 5? It's negative, negative 5 is positive 5, right? But if you take the absolute value of 5, it's just 5, right? So this is just what this, this is saying right here, right? So the absolute value of x is x if x is greater than or equal to 0, <clears throat> and it's negative x is if x is less than 0. So using that same definition by cases here on this part, so what is this? This is going to be just x over x is 1, right? Um, if x is greater than or equal to 0. And it is going to be uh, negative x over x if <coughs> x is less than 0. OK, so uh, one thing we should know here uh, is even though I've defined it by cases to be this, if x is greater than or equal to 0, 0 over 0 really doesn't make any sense, right? So we should, we should notice that this, <clears throat> this is really undefined for x equals 0, undefined at 0. And it's for, you know, the really basic reason, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I got ahead of myself. All right, I'm thinking of the answer to a here. <coughs> So it says, find an x value at which f of x is discontinuous. Well, you may remember from class, let me just remind you, what, what, what's the definition of being continuous at a point? You know that it means that the limit as x goes to a of f of a, uh, sorry, f of x, is just f of a, right? <coughs> so when we find a point at which f is discontinuous, that statement is going to fail somehow. And now, just from the definition of this function, we can see that it fails at 0 for the very simple reason that it's just not defined at 0. And so there's nothing to put on the, the right-hand side of this equation here. OK. Um, and I'll leave it to you to check that that's, that's actually the only problem. Um, look what happens if you put in something besides 0, like 7 or something, then you're just going to get 1 in this case. 7 over 7 is 1. If you put in something negative, like negative 7, you're going to get negative 7 over 7 is negative 1 here, right? Um, <clears throat> so actually, the function is just negative 1 for all negative numbers, positive 1 for all positive numbers, and undefined at 0. OK. So <clears throat> let me scroll down a little bit. So I guess for part A, we're supposed to find an x value, which is discontinuous, and we're going to use x equals 0. OK, great. Now, let's look at uh, part B here. So <clears throat> the answer is, uh, sorry, the statement to the question is a little snarky, I guess, because it doesn't want to give away the answer to part A. So it just says, suppose A represents the x value from your answer to part A. Well, you know, our answer to part A was, was 0. <clears throat> so just think of A as being 0 here. Where did that orange color go? Is that red? No, I don't know how I managed to get orange a second ago. I guess it's this. Um, OK, so for this, we need to do these four things. So there's a left, uh, sorry, right-hand limit, a left-hand limit. And then we put them together, possibly, to get just the limit. And then we're supposed to check this. And you know, all this is heading towards answering this question, why is the function discontinuous at a? So we did this a few times in class. You give the reason why a function is discontinuous, you know? So what you're doing is you're giving the reason why this, this statement doesn't work. And 
it's either going to be because the limit doesn't exist, this doesn't exist, or both exist and they're not equal, right? But anyway, let's check, <coughs> excuse me, let's check these four things. All right, so just let's look at I here. I don't know why I want to keep using the ugly orange, it's horrible. But it is getting close to Halloween. So let's look at the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side. All right, and so remember what I was saying here about the way the function is, de is defined, okay? So what does it look like just to the right of 0? It looks like this, right? And for a non-zero number, this is just something over s itself is always going to be 1, right? So actually the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of f of x is just uh, the same thing as the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of x over x, and this is just 1, okay? All right, so we should keep in mind that the answer to i is just 1, okay? Now let's check it from the left. What is that going to be? Probably you can, a lot of you just know, right? So what is the limit as x goes to 0 from the left-hand side? Well, let's check the definition of the function up here. So you can see that it means that it's going to be negative x over x if x is less than 0. So that's, what, that's the case that we're going to be in as we approach 0 from the left. And what is that going to be for a non-zero number? It's just going to be something over itself with a negative sign, so it's going to be negative 1. Okay, <coughs> so the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, left of f of x is just going to be negative 1. All right, you should make a little note here that the answer to this one is negative 1. Okay, now let me erase this arrow so I can write some other stuff here. Oh, that reminds me, there's this great function you can do where you just kind of get a, is this it? This is it. Just make everything go down. Okay. So, oh geez. Everything needs to go down. And let me remind you that we found that this was one and this is negative one. Okay, great. So what does that mean about the limit when we don't specify either the plus or the minus? It's just the plain limit. Well, it doesn't exist because remember, um, this thing exists, and it, if it exists, it's equal to the same thing that these two things must be, but if these things are not the same, then the limit doesn't exist. Um, okay, and we also, um, so the limit as x goes to 0 doesn't exist, and remember, you know, a is just code here for 0 because that's where the discontinuity is, and when we were talking about the function up here, we saw since, since 0 over 0 doesn't make sense, f of 0 is not defined. So it does not exist. All right, okay, so we've done b, and now the only thing left to do is to say why the function is discontinuous at a, All right, which is the same thing as <coughs> explaining why um, the definition of being continuous fails. So it's continuous at a if the limit of x, as limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to f of a, okay, but um, but you can see in the case of this crazy function absolute value of x over x, several things are going wrong. Okay, so what goes wrong? Well, about as much as possibly can go wrong because f of a, not defined, okay, that's one thing, not defined, so that's a big problem. <coughs> so let's call that problem the first. And what else goes wrong? Well, the limit as x goes to a of f of x also doesn't exist, okay? And remember that the third thing that can go wrong is that those things exist, but they're not equal. But actually, for this problem, we're just in this case where f of a is not defined and the limit doesn't exist. Okay, so that's what you would answer for part c here. And that's the end of the question.